Hello and welcome to In the Hyperloop. In this brief video, we're just gonna go directly into Hyperloop propulsion methods. Um, this website, Hyperloop Connected, is really good. During this pod competition, uh, we saw many different kinds of propulsion methods, but the one that really won the day was linear induction motor. Um, of course, Hyperloop Connected is the place to go for all types of technical information on Hyperloop. So, um, Linear induction motors is similar to a rotary motor but laid flat over a track. It consists of a primary and a secondary part. The primary part generates varying magnetic fields across the air gap. So as the pod is, it kind of levitates, but then it also being propelled because um, of the magnetic fields. Now, it's similar to a regular static motor or rotary, rotary motor. Um, this magnetic field induces a force in the secondary part which is the conductor. So you have kind of one part that's um, primary and then the second part's secondary. And so the primary gets pulled along the secondary. Um, this is similar um, and there are two different vari variations of linear induction motor, the short primary and the long primary. And we're not gonna get really into the technical details of the short um, or the long really in this very brief video. But what I just want to uh, highlight um, is that LSM is proven to be uh, uh, more energy efficient than uh, long uh, induction motor um, because there are fewer losses. Another, induction, another advantage is the active part of the track. Uh, there's no energy that has to be transferred or stored in batteries in the pod. One challenge is that the LSM to work properly, the exact position and velocities of the pods in the hyperloop tubes have to be known at every moment. Um, this can be done by placing sensors or pod-to-pod -pod communication or pod-to-station communication. Uh, linear short motor propulsion is used by TransRapid and the Shinkansen Magway. Um, and I'm just looking at one thing, short. Um, so yeah, in this article, um, the small recommendation, if the desired, if it is desired um, to develop a system that is energy efficient and is able to achieve higher velocities over a thousand kilometers an hour, one should opt for LSM. However, the guideway costs and complexity of an LSM propulsion system are higher than those of a, a, a short, uh, a long induction motor, uh, since the envisioned Hyperloop system of Delft Hyperloop must use energy efficiently and require speeds of approximately 1,000 kilometers an hour. The LSM is best option for propulsion of uh, system of a Hyperloop, future research uh, must prove the safety and reliability over speeds of a thousand kilometers. This should be achieved through extensive testing of the system at high speed facility. Only when safety and reliability are guaranteed could LSM be a real option for the Hyperloop. So um, I would highly recommend you read the rest of this, um, but um, other universities have done research on this. Um, MIT Hyperloop um, a couple years ago published a, a white paper here on um, their pod and um, you know they talk a lot about induction motors um, and I would highly recommend uh, you check out this uh, white paper um, as described earlier linear induction motors will likely be the best technology for propulsion and deceleration however uh, track side infrastructure is required for that um, so yeah it's really interesting um, there's also actual um, uh, research papers written on this of different um, hyperloop capsules and linear induction propulsion systems and um, I'd highly recommend you just check out these white papers uh, for further research and um, that kind of concludes this very brief um, introduction to linear induction motors we're gonna do more in-depth uh, research and study and seeing what exact hyperloop companies are using what kind of motors and um, as well as pod competition teams. So stay tuned and stay in the loop.